seasons transition from one to the next, as we say goodbye to a frosty Northern Californian winter and say hello to spring. Streams trickle down from the high hills. The bare branches of the trees are now heavy with leaf and wildflowers bloom in the fields. Down in the ponds, bluegill prepare to spawn and chunky bass patrol the weed beds for prey. Serpents emerge from the dark dens to bask in the warm sun. But let's not linger on the boring and mundane. We've got exciting things to talk about. Land Rovers. So it's important that we don't do these up too tight just yet because that has got to be done after the weight is on the vehicle. So up until this point, we just get them, you know, loosely in place. Springs on, the differentials hanging in the check straps, and what I'm going to try and do is jack the springs up towards the differential. This plate is going to go underneath. There we go, that's our brake uh, pipe guard protection that sits on top of the spring. And I think we might be ready to roll. You can see here the shackle. The shackle plates are kind of facing this way. I'm hoping as I jack up the spring that they're going to push back. And that's good news. Ah, that is not very helpful. Okay, so the whole chassis is lifting up off the off the blocks and then it just keeps going. These these check straps are keeping the diff up too high, so that that plan's failed. So I think what I might do is I'm gonna I'm gonna drop it down. I'm gonna take the check straps off, rest the differential on top of the springs and then and then attach them that way. I think will be a, a better a more better a plan. <laughs> Short one and a long one. Didn't pay enough attention. I've been looking everywhere, everywhere, and I finally found them. It's these lockers, and they've got to go onto the U bolt like that before they get. Um, well, it actually goes from from one to the other, so they don't fit this way, so that they can secure the locking nuts that go on. I'm using. Um, those nylock locking nuts. They'll probably just hang in there anyway, but extra security and, and this was part of the original package.
You Land Rover enthusiasts would recognise this as the rear stub axle that began appearing on later model Series 1 Land Rovers. And back in part 3 when I extracted this off the vehicle, we had a little look at this section of it here. And noticed how badly scuffed up it was, which is where the oil seal runs. And I said this was going to compromise the effectiveness of the oil seal, which is true. I then declared that this was an unserviceable unit, which is not true. Viewers wrote in with wise comments to save me from myself, telling me no. What we have here is a removable collar called a distance piece. And when it is removed, can be replaced for under $5. This whole unit, however, in the UK is worth over $100. Anyone who watches our channel will know it takes forever for our videos to come out. So by the time these commenters had commented, I had already gone ahead and purchased two more of these stub axles, but not from the UK. I couldn't find them on the websites there, not because they weren't there, but because I'm as useless as memory glands on a bullock. This is one, exhibit one of two. Here in the States, they're $160 each. So a combined total of around $320 plus tax plus postage come to I don't know what, but a good kick in the wallet. As I add this up, my failings, I failed to recognise that this was two pieces. I went ahead and purchased two of these units and I paid half again as much than I needed to. That, according to my maths, is a triple dickhead award. Most of us get dickhead awards at least some stage in our life, but three in the one day? When you get such a catastrophic blow to both your wallet and your ego, and everything, you really do have to look for silver linings. They are very shiny. So I got some advice to join the Australian Land Rover Owners Forums, which is a good thing, because I'm already in a little bit of a pickle, somewhat perplexed. I want to change over the snail. I think they call it a snail because it looks like a snail brake adjuster. So I had my little wrench, and on the back bolt there, I'm turning it, and the whole thing spins. Vice grips on this, and it won't come off. So it turns out that the wise folk that are there answering the questions say that the originals are riveted on. So that'll have to be ground off before we can remove that and then replace it with the new ones. Now this one here is actually in fairly okayish condition. I could probably get away with reusing it. But the, the one on the other side has definitely passed its use by date. And you can see that they've had problems before with it and they've welded that rivet onto the snail. Hmm? It almost looks like someone of my ability has gotten on <laughs> gotten onto that. Well, I've got my little bag of stuff here, so we are going to follow the advice and see where it leads us. I'm going to start with the buggered one first. At least if I destroy something, <laughs> it was already kind of in bad shape. Now we've worked out how to extract our original brake adjusters, we're going to have an analysis of our new ones. For there is quite a cluster of parts that come in the little box and we shall have a closer inspection right now. So they're calling this one here 
the black cam. This one here gets called the silver cam. This is called the silver spacer. This guy here is called a spring. That one is the adjusting pin. This gets the name of a bolt. This is called the yellow washer. And this one's called the black washer. I got no problem confessing that I was quite flummoxed how all this went back together. I did think that we were gonna reuse that collar from the original, but that's not the case. And continuing to try all the different combinations, I was just not getting it. So I went onto that Australia Land Rover Owners Forum that I talked about before and was recommended to do so. I haven't, I haven't introduced myself to anyone on there yet. I'm a, I'm a bit of a shy person. Anyway, I did find a fellow in my predicament asking the same questions and a wise man had written in with a solution for he had found some instructions. Now, the link for these instructions didn't work on my computer, but it's easy enough for me to tell you where to find them. It's a website called Paddock Spares. Paddock as in the field. And they sell parts for Land Rovers. Not, not Series 1, but for 2 and 3, which, which they cover. Anyway, if you go onto their website, type in brake adjuster kit. Once you get there, hit the product, go in, have a look. And then down on the page a little way, you'll find a little tab that says fitting instructions. And that will lead you to a PDF file, which then, of course, you can, you can print out for your own viewing pleasure. It's going to help quite a lot. So there you go. Now, looking at it, I'm going to actually, we're going to bring it up. Our special effects team's just going to bring this up on the screen right now so you, you, can, you can see what we're talking about. Ah, here we go. Right, we're on. So, if we have a close inspection, you'll see that there are four possible combinations. So, that's a problem for the guy trying to work it out on his own. And the short wheelbase we see at the top, that's the same all round all four wheels. The other three combinations are different, but they're dealing with long wheelbase for the front wheels, the rear wheels, and then depending on whether it's a four cylinder or a six cylinder petrol engine. So there you go, that can be a, that can be a little bit of a mystery. Okay, and there we have it, it's in. As a word of caution, because I did a test run before I started this, that once these springs are compressed, uh, it looks like there might be a, a one-use only thing. So you're <laughs> probably going to have to buy another kit, but they're not very expensive, which is probably why the quality is not high. From here, I think we can start assembling the stub axle. <laughs> going to go at the top and then that there that'll be at the top as well so let's slot this in there we go try and remember to pull that rag out that'd be uh that'd be troublesome What I'd like to do now is a trial brake fitting, just to make sure that with the new brake adjusters, everything's going to work fine. So I'm just going to use the original um, brake cylinder and fit it all in. All right, what I like to do is the side with the brake adjuster, work on that one first. So this long spring just here, that goes in that right there and then we hook it in there and then we have to make sure that the spring this long piece goes underneath the brake adjuster okay. now we're in at that point we can hook it in the bottom and that looks promising all right there we go so, now we've got the black spring goes down the bottom, and we hook it in there, 
Then we've got that little hole. But the good thing with this is once we lever it in the bottom, we, we can use leverage. There we go. Leverage, that hooks in, clamps in. And there we are. I think I've got it right. All right. So we're not going to put in any of these uh, other locking mechanisms or stuff. What we have, as we can see, the brake adjuster locking bolt. Okay, that is sitting a little proud. You can see how it's pressed up against the brake pad itself. Now the spring sits in a little indentation where it's supposed to, and the brake adjuster is pushing up against the peg where it's meant to be, but it does look like it's pushing the whole brake pad out just a touch. And the instructions did warn us of that, that it might be a little proud and might have to be ground down a touch. Now compare it, as we did a brake test, on, uh, on the other side with the original brake adjuster. We haven't cut that out yet. And you can see that it's uh, not pushing the brake pad at all. It's well clear. So that's what we're gonna do. Take this apart again, give it a little grind down, just a touch, and I think we'll be good to go. Trying to see the clearance that we have between the uh, brake shoe, which is going to slot in there, and that nut that we've ground back a little. It's looking better. That looks nicer. I might just skim a little off, a little more off and then we'll call it good. A brand spanking new brake cylinder with no name evident on it at all. The other one was a, a Lucas, I've heard of them. But this is a no name brand that comes out of a, uh, a box that says genuine parts. So I'm sure it's gonna be only the, the highest quality. Brakes have gone on pretty much as we've seen before, with the exception we have a new master cylinder. And we're just installing a little gadget down the bottom there with two screws, a little locking mechanism. Now take notice of the black spring, how it's facing the backing plate, and that sets it nicely out of the way of that little gadget we've just installed. Just to wrap that up, it should be said these videos are not tutorials, and I'm not a brake expert and I'm not even a mechanic. So if you're uncertain about brakes, you really should have somebody on this job that knows what they're doing. I don't want you cursing my name as your vehicle reaches terminal velocity down a very big hill. So we're out of time. Cricket's cold of the day. We're gonna call this part one. But before we go, I'd like to give you a little update on the differential. If you remember in the last episode, we found these nasty rust holes underneath it in what I thought was either a guard or some sort of a protection for the differential. Folk rode in an overwhelming number telling me that it was in fact reinforcement for the differential, a thing called a stiffener. Apparently these older axle housings when worked hard had a tendency to twist like a pretzel, which apparently is not good. It was ill-advised, folks said, that I was to cut it off. I feel that I was somewhere between a rock and a hard place on this one. For on one side, I'd be sacrificing the structural integrity of the axle housing by cutting off this reinforcement. And on the other side, that rust, no doubt, could get up to a lot of mischief in there. Either way, I figure that we could, at a later date, weld on a new stiffener, if needs be. But I still have to get this vehicle up and running again before I can do any harm to the axle housing. And that is gonna be a miracle in itself.